welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't know me, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a review on the highly anticipated release of the Venus XL palette, which if you guys are new to the Lime Crime scene, this is like a cult classic and they basically redid it and made it bigger and better and better and boom, this is what it resulted in. So I'm gonna be talking today about the formula. I've had quite some time to play with it. I got this just a couple weeks before it was released. And so I've had definitely more than enough time to play with like a lot of the colors and test the formula, test the longevity of the formula. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the Venus XL today. I'll kinda tell you the price point and what I think of the formula and the color payoff. We'll talk about some of the shades and compare it to other palettes currently on the market and that will sum up my review. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the review. It comes in this gorgeous packaging. First, let's talk about the artwork. It's the same cover as the Venus One palette. However, it's this pink and gold. I just love this, everything about this packaging. Um, it's the same Venus goddess herself. This one retails for 56 currently on LimeCrime.com. I believe it's also coming to Ulta soon, soonish, like the next week or so, but obviously like a release always launches on Lime Crime site first. So $56 for 18 shades, which brings each of the shades down to about $3 per shadow, which is a really great value, I think. It's on par with like, a lot of the other shadows um, out there currently. This palette, um, which is more of a play, I would say, on the Venus One, it has a lot of those similar grungy warm tones that people have come to love of the Venus One palette. This one has 10 more shades. So, boom, this is what she looks like. And it's got, ugh, everything about this palette is just so visually beautiful. Uh, you have three different rows of a nice mixture of mostly, I would say, warm tone colors. You have some pinks, you have some neutrals, and peaches, and purples, and mauves, and just, uh, if I could have like everything I've ever wanted in a palette, it would be right here. These are all the shades, you guys, that I gravitate towards. In case you're curious, I'm currently wearing it on my eyeballs, although it has been on since this morning. I'll kind of show you guys what I have on my eyes. So I have currently this shade, which is probably my favorite shade out of the palette, idolized for a transition shade. It's super pretty. I'm just gonna show you guys kind of some of the pigmentation and I've already been playing with swatches, hence my hand here. And this is not a tutorial, I just kind of want to show you guys what I have on my eyes. People got super aggressive in my last one because I did a tutorial with like a pink wig on and the wig had bangs and I didn't pin the bangs out of my face and people were very offended that I would do a makeup tutorial with bangs in the way. So I will never make that mistake again. Um, but I just love, love, love the shades in, in this palette and this one, Idolized, is such a great warm transition peachy tone and then on the rest of my lid I have triumph which is kind of like similar to a the shade red ogre in the Anastasia modern renaissance palette that shade was like one of my favorite reds to work with so I dipped into triumph let me just show you guys here triumph is what I have on the rest of my lid and I have that on the like lid itself and uh, these shades are so easy to apply. They blend really effortlessly. You don't even need super good brushes because these eyeshadows just really work for you. So I have that shade and then on the outer corner, I just deepened it up with, let's just grab another brush here with, you have a couple of darker shades. I'll tell you a couple of things I don't like about the palette in a second, but um, you can either deepen things up with Botticelli, which is a really pretty like eggplanty purple, or I like to go into Aphrodite and burnt gold and use that to deepen up the outer corner. So that's kind of what I have popped into the outer corner just to deepen it slightly. And again, just so easy to get in there and blend. 
So just wanted to show you what I currently have on my eyes since I am using a lot of the tones from this palette. I've been almost using this palette exclusively and I'm like a huge fan of the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. So I kind of wanted to start there with comparisons of shades that I love. So this is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. And the reason why I think um, I think that this a lot of people that love this palette will love this one even more is because A, there's more shades. So this is beautiful. It has like a lot of those peaches and like kind of staying camera here. It has a lot of those peachy tones and red tones, um, some metallics, but this one just has a much bigger shade range. So I just wanted to show you these two like next to each other. So these are the two shades. Obviously you can tell that the Venus XL has a lot more pinks and stuff to work with. And if you are a modern renaissance lover, you for sure will love the Venus XL. Okay, so I told you about the price point, which brings each of the shadows down to about $3. I think that's a super good value. Um, I love the shade Flora. It's a really pretty, bright, peachy, toned red, I guess. Um, it's more of a coral. Love, love, love this shade. It's going to be beautiful for summer. Um, you have Idolize here, really nice crease transition shade. And currently, it, I thought there were three finishes here. I saw some mattes, I saw some sparkles, and some shimmers. So I thought that was the three finishes, but looking on the Lime Crime website, they say that there's actually four finishes. You have mattes, you have a matte sparkle. There's two of them here, which the camera won't pick up. But you have um, Celestial and Fresca, which both have sparkle in them. They, they're calling them matte sparkles. So same matte formula you love but with added sparkles. Then you have Glow. They're saying it's a soft luminous finish that's neither satin nor shimmer. So it's kind of like a hybrid. It's just a glowy shade. And then you also have the metallics like oh, and Eden and Love and New Classic. This palette reminds me so much of the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. It's giving me all those vibes, but you just have so many more shades to play with. I'm just really excited about this palette. I love it so much. Um, this is definitely for sure like anybody who either wants to get their hands on a palette for the first time, like get this one, especially if you love the warm tones in here. You have so much to work with. You can create so many different kinds of looks. So I think that's pretty much what I had to say about the palette itself. The color payoff, you guys, is really, really good. I mean, I'm just going to dip my finger into Passion here. Passion is one of the shades that I used in, I'll link the two makeup tutorials that I did. They're just quick three minute like tutorials set to music and you can kind of see me playing with the colors. I also love this burnt gold. It's such a grungy color and it just makes like pretty much any sh any look come to life. Um, the, some of the shimmers that I love are New Classic. It's like a brownish purple shimmer. Um, what are some other ones that I played with? Eden is a really pretty like rose gold. Don't know if these are appearing well on camera. Um, I'm also gonna show you, I'm running out of fingers here. Flora, like boom. That's Flora. Um, Botticelli is like a really pretty eggplant. Some of the shades, you guys, I will say are a little bit more powdery than others. The formula's drier. You're gonna have some drier formulas on your mattes, like Botticelli's pretty dry. You'll feel when you're rubbing it that it's not as buttery as some of the metallics and that's just kind of par for the course. Um, and yeah, so lots of reds, lots of grungy colors, lots of shimmers. So a very versatile palette, even though all the shades are pretty warm toned. So I think that's what I had to say about the colors. The pigmentation is really good. The color payoff is really good. Um, not too much fallout on any of the shades. They blend and work really nicely. It's kind of hard to come up with a palette that like most of the colors are complementary, meaning like you can blend them into each other and they don't look out of place. I think that they did a really good job with the color selection here. And yeah, I really love this palette. Okay, so I do have a couple of negatives and that's just, even though I love this palette, I mean, I kind of just have to do my pros and cons. The one thing, I think this comes with like a really nice big mirror. However, 
the thing that I don't like is like, I feel like if you're someone who's gonna use the mirror in a palette, it's usually because you're traveling, right? And so like you need access to a mirror. And I don't like the fact that like it doesn't stay open. And there's some Tarte palettes that like when you open it up, they just stay open and then you can do your makeup like using them. I feel like if you're gonna try and use this and do your makeup, it's just very annoying to have to hold it open to use the mirror. I would have loved it if they would have had something that just automatically propped open and you know, it make, make it a lot easier to do it on the go. Um, I also wish that there's just one lighter, like super light color called Canvas, which is like a pretty beigey shade. I wish they had like a lighter shimmer that I can use for a brow bone or an inner corner highlight. Um, I think you can use this, but I tend to like a shimmer similar like I use Max Nylon right now. I wish they had something similar to like a MAC Nylon or in the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, Modern Renaissance palette. By the way, I'm getting eyeshadow all over the place. I wish they had something like Vermeer or Primavera, which are like two light toned shimmery shades. I wish Blind Canvas wasn't a matte. I wish it was more of like a shimmer. I don't think that there's a ton of colors in here that lend well to being like an inner corner light color. You can use blank canvas, but again, I just think shimmers show better when you're using them in that fashion. Other than that, there's one more thing that I would have liked to have seen in this palette. I think Botticelli is a really nice color, like an eggplant shade, but I was thinking it would show more as like a black or like a very dark color, like a super dark. And when you put it on and blend it in, it's more of a, a purple. Like it almost even appears as like a bright purple. So I wish there would have been a darker shade. I feel like every palette should have, if not black, like a super dark brown. Like the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette doesn't have a black either. However, I can use, I can use the Cypress um, Umber color to create like a really dark smoky eye if I wanted to. And I don't feel like the Venus XL has that, you know, it doesn't have a dark shade that I can smoke anything out super well. But again, other than that, other than the mirror and not having like a shimmery inner corner color for brow highlight or inner corner highlight and not having a black, everything else like I completely and totally love about it. So I think that completes my review on the Venus XL. If you guys have any questions that I didn't cover about the color payoff, the pigmentation, um, the shade range, anything like that. I've definitely been playing with it. So let me know if you have questions about like specific colors. I know some people love cooler tones. There's not a ton of cool in this palette. So you definitely have to like the way that you look in warm tones to like get behind this palette. But uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys all in my next video.